Today we're tasting some ciders, and not just regular ciders, we're tasting natural ciders. Uh, you don't find that very common in America. A lot of ciders in America are made from uh, pitched yeast. So what they'll do is they'll take the, the apple juice, they'll crush it up, get the juice out of it, kill all anything wild growing in it, and then pitch regular yeast, uh, which is not Brettanomyces or Lactobacillus, neutral yeast. Then they'll back sweeten it usually, and you have your American cider. In Europe, it's different. Uh, a lot of ciders there, in fact, I think almost every cider I've had from Europe is natural. So they're taking whatever's in the apple skins, whatever's in the apple juice, ferments that. And I wanted to cover that today because I love natural fermented stuff. I love uh, what you can do with that. And I love like terroir driven stuff, like natural wine, especially. And these natural ciders are really cool. You get some really, really cool flavors out of them. So this first one here is a cider from, from France. And this is a cider from Spain. And this is a homebrew cider. And by homebrew cider, I mean I harvested the dregs from a Spanish cider and made a beer out of that yeast I harvested. So whatever was in there, made beer out of it. And I, I, I'll link the recipe below of exactly what was in this. Um, I think it was just a regular ale, and the focus was just to see what the yeast did. So what is this French one? What was the story behind this one? All right, so this one, it actually is from Normandy in France. Uh, it goes back all the way to 1919. And you'll see that a lot amongst European wineries, cider houses, whatever they are. It's a family business and we kind of, we had prohibition happen, so we kind of miss out on a bunch of the history. So they go back to 1919. Um, it's actually the guy who started it, his name was Jules de Friesch. So uh, very, very fancy. His son, Leon, came in in the 1940s and said, hey, we should make this a real thing. We should not just make cider, but do it as a trade as well. And so in honor of his father, he created the cider house called La Père Jules, which means Father Jules. Awesome. So they've been doing that since the 40s. Um, this is actually made from 20 different varietals of apples. So just Dang. like grapes have different varietals, apples have a bunch of different vari varieties yeah. as well. Um, so let's get started. Yeah. Whoa, this one's really carbonated. <laughs> it's like champagne carbonated. Wow, a lot more carbonated than I thought it was going to be. The Spanish cedras are generally really, really flat. So it's interesting to see how carbonated this was. I'm also curious to see how much they back sweeten this or if they just let it be whatever because they do not back sweeten these Spanish ciders. Okay, so we'll taste that in a minute. Wow, really cool color. It's like, it's orange. Yeah. Like a really cool orange. Wow, okay. So um, now this is a Spanish cider, also known as cedra, cedra natural, if you will. Uh, and what's the story behind this one? So this one um, also goes back to the early 1900s. A family run since that time. These people have been doing cidra out of the Basque region in Spain. And the Basque region is in the northern part of Spain. Yeah, northwest. And see, yeah, that has like nothing. Yeah, it's like I can see a little bit of sparkle. <laughs> There's a tiny bit of sparkle. So how long have they, have they been doing it for? A uh, hundred plus years. I want to say since 1904. And what's the name 1904. of this? This one is uh, Arastain. Arastain. Okay. Arastain. Okay, here's, they'll, we'll show them. Show the folks at home the label. Hopefully it focused. And then this is the label for this one. And so this one, uh, how they would get carbonation back in the old days is they would load these bottles in the boxes on the trucks and they'd put them in sideways so that when they were going to their destination, it would shake them around a lot. And when it shook them around, it would reinvigorate the carbon dioxide, get it going in the bottle so that you'd get a little bit of bubbles. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, here's my cedra. By cedra, I mean a beer made with cedra dregs. Cool. So yeah, so this is very similar in color, actually. This is very neutral grain. Uh, this one's obviously hazier here. And there's this guy. And there's that guy. It's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, let's just taste them all. Let's start with this one here. All right. The French Normandy one. It smells tart. Like tart apple? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really good. It's got a slight bit of funk. So the like nose, the nose is funky. Very, uh, this Brett, for sure Brett in this. I mean, right off the bat, that's a, but it has like an apple. But it's Brett really clean. It. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. That's really good. I mean, look, it's it's really unfiltered. The the smell is very very Brett, but it does taste like they back sweeten this a little bit. I don't think they We're, did. 
Really? It tastes a little bit sweet. Not in a bad way, but it well, tastes like they, they added something. Well, it says that what they do during harvest. So like I said, there's about 20 different types of apples in there. And they mix the acidic apples with the sweet apples. That's what they do. And yeah. that's, that's what I'm getting then. Yeah. Okay, so it's not back sweet. It's just a natural sweeter yeah. apple. A sweeter apple. Okay. So they combine a bunch of apples till they get it where they want. Now, do you know if they barrel age these? They do barrel age They do, them. okay. And that's all, all, for all months. ciders. All ciders. Okay. They're barrel aging for months at a time. Okay. Which that's is why right. cedras get a little expensive too. It's not a fast. Yeah, it's almost like making a wine. Yeah. It's, it's that extensive. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. You start with this. This is the. Uh, this is Aratzin. the Basque. Aratzin? You said it earlier. Aratzin. Aratzin. Uh, that's. I don't know. That's what I say. <laughs> Tartar, funkier. Yeah, the nose is already funkier. Oh and, yeah. And maybe oh, it's yeah. just because it doesn't have the sweet apple back. Oh uh, yeah, way tartar. It has like a. Um, I almost wouldn't say this is cider. I mean, it's that weird. I, I don't want to say it. It tastes like a really cool, funky beer with some, maybe some apple juice added. Maybe. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it's good. It's really dry. No sweetness in this at all. Like, none. Really funky. Mm. Lactic. And that is funky, but a little sweeter. Which and one do you and a, little more, a little more apple-y. And this is nice and enjoyable, but I do prefer this. I prefer this one. Really? I could like I could drink that. this entire thing. <laughs> it's really good. In a single sitting. It's really good. Yeah, you're getting all sorts of complex stuff with these. And you can taste the countryside and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so this is my cedra. Uh, again. Beer cedra. Beer cedra. <laughs> not an actual cider. So off the smell, I'm not getting any, any funk. A little bit. It is a little bit there. What style of beer did you do it with? It was an ale, I think. I, I'll be a good taster right now and I'll look it up. This is a one gallon batch, and the grain was two row German wheat, flaked barley, acid mold, and some DME. And then I added just a little bit of hops for an IBU of 24, and it was crystal hops, and just dregs I grew up. We had a half gallon, a quarter gallon starter with the dregs. That was a four day starter, brewed it on 410 16. 423 16, the gravity is at 1.002. So that was like extremely attenuated out. That means there's like no sugar left in that at all. Hmm. September 5th, 2016, so almost a year ago. Well, actually almost exactly a year ago. Gravity's still at 1.002. And then I bottled it on September 20th. So there is a fruitiness to this. Yeah. There is. It's really smooth, but there's like a slight bit of fruit, mm -hmm. a slight bit of funk. There is some little bit of funk. But like very mild, like this is a very easy drinking beer. It is actually. And a little bit of tartness, but I, I'm not getting like lactobacillus acidity. Oh, maybe I can maybe try and reharvest some of these from the bottle again and try something else with it. It'd be interesting. Now, <clears throat> there is a way to pour this cedra, Spanish cedra in particular, a proper way. And it's called Esconciar. And how this is done is you hold it way above your head and a glass way low next to you. And I, from what we've seen, you basically don't even look at your glass. You just you pour it over your head. I have seen where they do look down sometimes, but I'm for, the most, have to look down. for the most part, they just keep they just keep eye contact at whoever they're pouring at. So I'm gonna try and do that. She's gonna try and do that. I'm not gonna try and look down. So we got an extra glass to to try this. Right. This is not gonna go well. So uh, we'll angle the camera so we can Over actually there. yeah back back away. <laughs> look at how much more head it gets though. I got some in the glass. You got some. <laughs> That's really, really, really hard to do. So the idea behind doing this is you get more carbonation because these are really, really flat. And then there's also some molecular structures that restructure supposedly when you do it. That's according to like these old school guys who've been doing this for hundreds of years. Uh, looks cool either way, at least not how I did it. All right, you want to try it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. Get a little off. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's really hard. It's really hard. Okay. So, so close. So we close. We were so close. So we were wondering too, like, would it taste different if you inconciere it into someone's mouth? So we want to try this because I think in the mouth, my, directly in the mouth might be the best way to go. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think that works. I think you get a better flavor 
I'm going directly into the mouth. <laughs> I think that actually works really well. Now, more testing to be done on directly into the mouth. We need to get a pro involved in this. So, or we have to practice a lot. Have to practice a little bit, <laughs> but I think we're on something with directly into the mouth. Yeah. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, stay tuned for more. And drink some Spanish cider, drink some French cider, drink some American cider, harvest some dregs, and uh, get out there and do some things that are rad.